What's up, everybody? Today, big, big guest. We got big. David Spade at a new show called Snake Oil uh, playing up on Fox. If you want to check that out, it's a game show. It's a guy that uh, basically grew up on uh, yeah. SNL, and we get into some SNL stories. We get into who his favorite funny people are in his life and uh talk about uh, just shoot me a little bit the show that he was on right. talking about being a stand-up in in today's world uh he, he said something interesting he said that a lot of people don't know him as a stand-up although mm -hmm. he started as a stand-up right. and then kind of took a career in movies and film and now he's getting back into stand-up so right. no you're a big fan of him and uh obviously showed yeah, did you think so? Did it? Yeah, no, it was very gracious. Well, it was even not too much, though. Right? Well, the assistant was like that. That was very. That was very. Made David feel really. I could tell it made David feel really um, nice that you know Pete. Yeah. Pete kind of fawned over him. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, well, like I said, man, he was one of my first real heroes, and uh, I even had a Tommy Boy poster on the wall. I thought he was hilarious in it, and uh, you know, we talked about some other things too, all aside from SNL and all that. A little bit about the hair, the shades, and bro. Sebastian asked him if he ever had a encounter with Tommy C, Tom Cruise. Yeah, which we talked about after the show, and I think I want to make this a segment, um, talking to celebrities about if they've ever had a Tom Cruise experience. And so far, it's right. been Grillo. It's been who? Um, Spade. Spade, Grillo, Jay Moore. Jay Moore. Yeah. So three guys have had this basically almost the same story about this guy Cruz, right right it's like you know how many people say they saw the ufo and they're giving you the same description <laughs> right over and over do we, do we open it up to regular people daily like you know like a guy going i owned a deli in kentucky and tom Cruise came in one day took his helmet off and ordered a pastrami sandwich yeah that's a good point um we'll be fielding these uh these um comments on patreon so if you do have a tom Cruise story and you want to give it to us. The only way really to do that is through the Patreon. Uh, Dude, uh, someday, I'm sorry I to interrupt you. He's going to come up those stairs with the helmet in his hand. What's up, guys? Let's do this. Some sight that he, someday he's going to come in. The, and that is the last show. What if he comes in? What if we get this guy in two months, right? That ain't going to be the last show. What I'm worried about. That's a good point. If this guy comes in here. First, yeah, yeah. If this guy comes in here, right, right, and we're in the dark. Let's say we're in the dark. We have no lights on. Mm -hmm. He comes in here. Yeah, the whole studio will light up just on his electricity. I mean, that, that yeah. that's yeah. how I feel. Like this guy's glowing. I yeah, right. Yeah. Do you think? Do you think if a room is dark and and he's in the room, you can feel it? <laughs> 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 right, this is. A, no, this is I don't know. You just said he can light up the whole. He room. can. He can. So good, good, good stuff here with Spade. Um, and we're really looking forward to you guys checking it, checking this episode out. This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. What's up? What's up? What's up? Hey man, Pete. Good to see you. What's up? What's up? Yeah, I know that. Uh, is it how we do? Okay. Yeah, listen, listen. We got, we got a lot, lot to ask you, a lot yeah. to get into. Thank you for being here. Big time, bro. Thank yes. you. Pleasure. Big, huge fans. I want to ask you about the sunglasses mm. right. uh, coming in to yeah. indoors. Is that planned where you came in with the sunglasses and then take them off for the podcast? No, it wasn't. But then when I was in the bathroom, I go, I'm going to put them on when I walk in. That was planned. Oh, okay. So you took them off in the bathroom or you had yeah. them on? And then I put him, I, I, I go, oh, I forgot my sunglasses. And I go, I'm going to wear them to walk in. <laughs> but and then, see, now you wore them to come in because it looked cool. But yeah. do you not think, when do you think you're at a level where you're like, I'm going to keep them on for the whole cast? Because they looked so cool. I could have kept them on. Them. Yeah. You, if them you would have kept them on. I would have, I would have gone. Wow, my man, I know, I <laughs> fucked it up. we can redo you the know, entry <laughs> because no, because I, I wear them sometimes. We do our promos on our stupid show, and uh, and Dana wears some, and then every single person just talks about that. Why the fuck do you guys? Help? I'm like, uh, aren't you inside? Shut up! This uh, no one asked Jack Nicholson why he has on. They go, yeah, because no. he's cool. Right. <laughs> 
So it's a little bit of that. But then I thought it was kind of a bit. It was like 20% of it. Because I was in the bathroom and I go, I'll walk in and they'll be like, look at this fucking guy. I think he's Elvis. Because I have a Hawaiian shirt on. But I did this on purpose. This, Boy, this looks good on me. Well, you did the half pop in and said, I'll be right there. Taking a and dump. And we were both <laughs> loving the shades. Yeah. Yeah, that, so. was, that wasn't on purpose. Because I just walked through and uh, your buddy walked us in and then we got upstairs and I was... Because uh, the house is so rich, I was just like sort of taking it all in. It's mostly stairs so far, oh. but then uh, and three housekeepers oh. within. By the way, guys, they, we work together. Yeah, nah, not buddy yet. Not there. No, just you said buddy. Colleagues. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Associates. <laughs> but if I look this pale, Getting closer. We had a nice lunch today. And if I look that pale, uh, blow my fucking brains out. <laughs> I, this is me with. I think I had some powder on because I just did a show. No, you look you look great. You yeah. look you look great. Pay, te- pay no attention to Don't that go screen. By yeah, that's that's not that's camera. that's not broadcast quality. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, that looks like there's a pruder from. All right, go ahead. So we want to also we ask you one more. Question. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead. I'm 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 not gonna lie, man. I'm a little uh, that's nervous. Good, for real? Out. Yeah. What you can, when I first started comedy, I was talk, friends with. Talks about uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? He was, he's like, I'll oh, just take a take a second. No, this is where no, I go for like this. Oh, this is where I go right. first. Right. <laughs> anyway, I got to meet you at Saturday Night Live when I was about a year in through Brewer, and I've been a fan Bro, since wow. like the the beginning, man. I mean, oh, that's from thank you. from the bit about you two with uh, oh, you know, no, no more, more, no more, and you two's yelling no war, but my suck job seat. Yeah, yeah, it's all yeah, great, man. Such a great, I'm pleased you know, to meet you. Thank you. That was you. back in the old days when you did something on HBO. It really stood out because there wasn't much. There was not much game in town. There was networks. I didn't think Fox was around yet. Yeesh. But there was uh, just HBO. And so they'd have a special like Eddie Murphy or the ones like we grew up on. I think you grew up on them too. And then um, now and then, and then uh, they did Young Comedians. So I did that. I yeah, think that yeah. was a bit I did on that. Yeah, yeah. And they had to jam me in there because I missed it three years in a row. Uh, they kept picking other people and I was like, fuck man, I'm not getting, I'm getting too old. And they're like, oh, they picked Richard uh, Belzer this year. I'm like, isn't he 90? Like, <laughs> you know, it was a young comedian, but they didn't really go by that. Right, and right, then, right. And then yeah, I, yeah, I was yeah. like, I'm actually young. So I was like 23. I finally got on. Dennis Miller pushed me on. I had, my managers were producing it. So they all jammed it from five people to six. So everyone tightened their set, which, you know, comics love. <laughs> so, yeah. hey, if you took a few minutes out of your act, he could go on and like, go oh, fuck yourself. I don't, I don't give a shit if he goes on. <laughs> so I did it and uh, it was super fun. And uh, you know what's good is you didn't ask a question and then I answered a long one. I know. It's like all, uh, amazing. It's How an hour, just, dude. Like, we got that's got... the special where you did the bit about Advil or something. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and that's not going to work for New me, Trap and John. You were already, you could see the characters that, like, you know, came going. out of folly. Got Nuprin joke. I yeah. really fucking ran with that. That yeah, was man. get hit in the face with a baseball bat. <clears throat> yeah. Did you know that traditional antidepressants only work for about forty to sixty percent of people? They could also come with nasty side effects, make you feel numb, and may require taking a daily pill for the rest of your life. We need better alternatives. But there's a new tool to improve your mental health. At-home ketamine therapy. Mindbloom is the leader in at-home ketamine therapy, having safely helped thousands of people overcome their anxiety and depression. Now, unlike traditional talk therapy, ketamine works quickly and doesn't have the unpleasant side effects of traditional antidepressants. In a study of over 1,200 Mind Bloom clients, 89% reported improvements in their anxiety and depression after only four sessions. Right now, Mind Bloom is offering our listeners $100 off your six-session program when you sign up at mindbloom.com slash the cast and use the promo code the cast. Take the first step and break free from your anxiety and depression with Mind Bloom mindbloom.com slash the cast and use the promo code the cast but now i see the billboard i'm driving yesterday are you i see you in the suit for the mm. snake oil salesman Fucking right clown yeah that's what i was I, like, I think you look great and i think you're gonna be great at it but i was wondering how you feel about the whole thing well, i you, know how you feel from that question <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> He goes, are you a 
Howard John Benet Ramsey. <laughs> I'm like this. <laughs> come on, come on. You know what it was? It was a nine hour photo shoot where I look cool as shit. Heather will attest. And then at the end, just this clown outfit, just for the one shot we'll never use in a trillion years. So I did that. And then they're like, just, can you look fucking ridiculous? It might right. help. So I did it. I go, that's not really. Is this your idea? Did snake you... oil? No, it was yeah. Will Arnett. Uh, he, he came to me. I did that show Smartless, and afterwards he goes, he did, you might be good for this. I just never thought of doing a game show. It sounded like kind of a funny idea. The idea, I think he said, was like Shark Tank, sort of a comedic Shark Tank, and then one of the, it's two products, one is fake. And so these contestants come out, and they have a celebrity advisor that helps them with their business, you know, picking, whatever, just a reason to get a celebrity in there, which always helps. And then they pitch, they pitch, and they go, they get like 30 seconds to ask questions and then they go, you got to pick which one's real. And it was harder than I thought. It, it, it was more fun than I thought. So that part came okay. out good. Crowd got into it. It got tense. It is it, is it a money. product? Like literally like yeah. something you hold up? Mm -hmm. See, like that's great because, you know, when I riff, I have a 10 year old daughter. Sometimes like she'll find my one hitter yeah. and I got 10 seconds. <laughs> of the fake thing that it is. One <laughs> I go with the stamp. But when I do letters, you do a little stamp. Can I see how it works? Not right now. We're busy. Fun Can thing. you tell usually? Are you like, no, on. really? And I go, don't wow. tell me. And then, because I kind of jump in a little bit and there's like, honestly, legal problems with that. So I say, I can't know. And then what the real problem is they're stupider than you think. So you see one and you go, well, that's ridiculous. It's the next one. Then the next one's even dumber. And you go, so one of these is real. And then the hard part is going, well, God damn it. So, and then they ask questions and you got to stop. And they're like, so no one knows anything. And then they ask me and I don't know. And the advisor, and then the crowd starts screaming what they think. So the only good part is like, not the only good part. When I would go on the side, Heather and, you know, like hair and makeups on the side, when I'd come during commercial, they'd be like, I got two of them right. But the other one, and then they're all like, so they got into it. So I go, oh, you're not bored? Oh, okay. So at least it, who knows? Yeah. It's up against America's Got Talent. I can't, I'm angry about that. Yeah, but yeah. It's I, year 10. They can't even find 10 people to stand on that stage anymore. I That's watch. the guy. That's the one, right? This is cool. That's yeah. cool. I like it. Yeah. Never I to like be seen. The, I like the billboard. Oh, you do? I do. It fits yeah. snake oil. Yeah. Well, what are you wearing on the show? It's more like that. It's more, that's actually cool, but on the show, I wear. Something you wear out, though? I just oh, got yeah. a text, put them on. Oh, oh yeah. man, boom. You gotta, you're getting texts? No. It's literally a different interview. Unfortunately, no more questions. <laughs> <laughs> that side shot, I look gross. I look gross in almost every angle. I don't know what's going on. It's almost mathematically impossible. Look at that shit. Oh, Look at that fucking man. shit. Nah, I disagree. I like that when I don't slump? Mm? Chicks, go ahead. Agt, okay. those morons. I love making fun of the other shows. I yeah. think because they they make sure they give you some tough competition, right? So A A America's Got Talent is uh is the, like the twelfth year. So it's literally like five people up there like doing hand signals. I'm like, we're out of talent. It's over. We, <laughs> we've done them all. They're done. No one's talented anymore. We got them all. We found the winners every year. Now they're sorting out. Starting to slow down because right, uh, I right. watched it last night. Did I tell you that she's not listening. Listen, then, I'm, I'm at, <laughs> we watch uh, HGTV. You know, love it or list it. So yeah. I mean, that's where we're at in this world. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm on a Friday night. I'm watching people buy a house, shitholes too. Yeah, not even like nice houses. It's some dump. So yeah, it's 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 people, if it keeps you involved in somehow. It's an it's not a uh, talking about it too much, but you know, it's not based on any other show. It's just a new show, so it's very hard to get those put together like how many contestants how much do you bet the mathematics how it works the legal problems this they have to come up with all these products we film an infomercial for each one we make up with uh you know improv people so we show what the product is so you can figure it out a little bit and then at the end uh then you bet and lose or win yeah there's me that's in front of the chateau folks yeah yeah that's where I saw it. maybe yeah, you've heard about it. it we just saw you did a video yeah, you see that shirt on, on Instagram. Yeah, you see that? yeah, you had the same shirt, the whole thing. You've been uh, uh, famous for a long time, man. Yeah, so we too long. <laughs> <laughs> Never too getting long. angry. <laughs> Never too long. So we were talking about the crew that you kind of came up with yeah. on SNL, and, uh, and 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 people just talking about this early. I don't want to steal your thunder. No, here. please. But it was kind of like our kind of rat back of of today, 
right? Yeah. I think Pete, what were, you, what were you talking about? Sandler and, and yeah, like I wrote, I wrote for Kevin on like his last two sitcoms, like uh, Kevin Can Wait, and like for example, he gets Sandler, and him he's talking to Sandler, and Sandler's like, we should get the guys, and Kevin's like, I remember Kevin was like, well, I wish we could get the guys, and then Adam's like, I'll make a call, you know? And yeah. Like, you were busy because I remember they were specifically were hoping to, oh, get to you. do that show. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And like Chris came on, and and Adam came on. But it seems like Adam's like the Sinatra and like, you know, it's like, a, it, that's almost a movie in itself is like, Adam's going to make a movie and then we cut to, it's almost like Armageddon where you cut the yeah, each guy yeah, and what yeah. he's doing, you know, like, you know, whatever you're doing, they you're hiking you, through yeah. the woods, you get the beeper, where are we going? Yeah. And you're there, It right? is kind of like, that's kind of the way yeah. Grown Ups was and, uh, and those, <clears> even <throat> those other movies, if any of us is doing a movie, you can usually call the other guy to say, do you want to come just do this? Well, you don't put them out too much, but you say, come just do, and you try to make it funny for them to come score some little thing. It is fun to get with those guys, and you want to make it yeah. funny, but I thought those wound up being good family movies, you know? Yeah. And people are like, oh, you just, you guys just go on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, unfortunately, it is fun. And, and people are mad, but right. it's actually, we do stuff. But the funniest part is Adam has to wrangle us like cats. And so if it's, you know, seven of us, it's like yeah. Rock and Selma Hack and Maya Rudolph. And right. We're all waiting. We all have our sides and drinking coffee. And they're like, okay, let's do one. And, and then they go, Rock. And he's like, oh, my, that's me. And then he's like, dude. And I'm like, well, we all have one line in every scene. So you just, you're either cramming if you're in a real scene or when you just have, it's peppered throughout, you sort of space out. And yeah. He's like, guys, we fucking go. We got to get it before noon. We haven't even done one take yet. So he kind of keeps us in line, but it's definitely a, a good time to do those. Yeah, it sounds like an Ocean's Eleven back in the day. Yeah, you yeah. know, where like, you know, do you guys do shows ever at night? And, and No, we should though, because be uh, I, you know, I went out with Adam's tour and now he's doing it again, but I can't do it because I just started mine again. You go on the tour a lot. He goes on a lot. Yeah. I, I play the theaters that if the theater had a baby, and then I'd play that theater because he plays the big <laughs> one, and Adam plays big ones. And uh, but it's fun to go out. I just went out last weekend, and but it didn't sync up with his because he's going out a lot during the week, and I'm going on weekends. I just can't. I can't do both. It's too too hard. Yeah. The the Chris Farley movies mm -hmm. is that something that you guys together said? Okay, we're going to do movies together, or did someone come to you guys and go put you guys in movies? You guys are a great team together just through the SNL uh, um, years. We were on SNL. We were pretty close. We had some fun there. We were just sort of, sort of gravitate to each other. He's a very fun, likable guy, and he would cling on. You know, he was out of Wisconsin. I was out of Arizona. We were all sort of out of our element. We weren't New York East Coast people. And just had a good time, you know, and Chris Rock lived in Brooklyn, and everyone was kind of separated, so we, he and I were fell together, but we were all good friends. So... We do that, we're around the office goofing around and then uh, he's obviously blowing up way quicker than me. I, I took me forever to even get much going there, but at least Lauren saw that there was something going on off camera that was funny and interesting. So he, he assigned Bonnie and Terry Turner, the two writers from the show. Why don't you write some movie about these guys? I have a deal with Paramount and we'll do it in the summer. And I talk about, you know, having some say, he just says that and we're like, Ba we have a green light and now we're backing into shooting without an idea or a script. And it's usually so hard to get a movie made that they come up with one called uh, Billy the Third. And that's what it was called. It was it was a Midwestern. That was a funny title because it's about Farley from the Midwest. His name is Billy and his dad is Big Bill and, uh, and Sandler's doing fucking Billy Madison. So we're talking about the movies and we're like, oh, is yours called Billy Madison? And we're all doing them in the summer. So I remember going to see Adams and he was doing his in Canada too. And we were doing Tommy boy. And I'm like, we can't both be Billy. <laughs> and so he was shooting first. So we said, we'll change ours. And then it was so hard to think of another title because Billy the third sort of was good. And uh, I didn't like Tommy boy when they came up with it. I remember we didn't come up with it until after we shot, you know, they say Tommy boy in the movie, Hey, Tommy boy. But, um, that wasn't the title. I thought it was kind of goofy. It was called Rocky Road. It was called Big Time. Um, a bunch of titles and poster mock-ups. And then I just got a call one day. It's Tommy Boy. Right before, you know, before we're doing press yeah. or something. And I'm like, oh, really? All right. But now now I couldn't picture anything else. But, yeah, but back then it was, uh, 
and, and, and your question about Farley, they, it just seemed to work out on that one. And then Lauren said, let's do another one next summer. And uh, then that turned into Black Sheep. He was uh, contracted to another movie. I was not. So it, 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 in a crazy turn of events for him blowing up to such a big star, if I said no, he wouldn't do it. And he had to do it. So they offered him Cable Guy right before it for way more money. And he, and it was a pressure situation because the writer, Fred Wolf, worked at SNL. I was at SNL and Farley was there. <laughs> Hair grease back. I don't even know about this one. <laughs> Maybe it's something for next summer. And I, I didn't know about Cable Guy. And I'm like, oh, really? I go, oh, this is going to be great. I haven't even read it yet. And he goes, well, I'll read it. You know, see how you feel. And I'm like, oh, you just say, I want to do Cable Guy. I'd be like, well, fuck, if you're getting that much money, yeah, we'll do this another time. But I didn't really know the situation that I heard about. And I'm like, oh, now I feel horrible because if I read it and like it, I go, I can just be honest. If, if it's shitty, I don't want to do a shitty movie. Let's do it. We'll push it. Even though it's my own guy, our buddy writing it. Um, and I read it and I go, it's pretty funny, man. And, and it, the problem was, it, it turned out to be pretty good, in my opinion, but the director took 40 pages out right away. I mean, once we all, we, we worked all, oh, we're going to do it. I said, we riffed on the first one. We're just going to make up shit anyway. We're already halfway there. It's pretty funny. It's a good scenario. And uh, he's like, all right, all right. So we do it. And then the director, there was problems. And then we're ripping stuff out of the script. Then Fred was banned from the set. And then we don't have one of the writers we used to riff with. And now we're making up stuff. But they kept us apart in the movie. It's just so many things that way harder than it should have been. Yeah. One worked on a small scale. You know, it was, it turned out to be a big movie over time where they made money on video and stuff, but it was by no means like a huge movie like today where you go, oh my God, this movie like Barbie. It was just number one, but good for us basically. And then it just sort of had a life after that. And then, uh, but Black Sheep, man, that was a tougher uphill battle and came out and it, it came out number one and did all right, but it, I think we all wanted more from it, you know, even the crowd. And so after that, he did Beverly Hills Ninja. And there was another one called um, Edwards and Hunt he did with Matthew Perry that I think was for us again, but it was time to not do one together. Like, let him get somebody else. I'll do something else and blah, blah, blah. And did you know that your temperature at night can have one of the greatest impacts on your sleep quality? If you wake up too hot, or too cold, I highly recommend you check out Miracle Made's bed sheets. Inspired by NASA, Miracle Made uses silver infused fabrics and makes temperature regulating bedding so you can sleep at the perfect temperature all night long. Using silver infused fabrics inspired by NASA, Miracle Made sheets are thermal regulating and designed to keep you at the perfect temperature all night long. So you get a better sleep every night. And these sheets are infused with silver that prevent up to 99.7% of bacterial growth, leaving them to stay cleaner and fresh three times longer than other sheets. No more gross odors. Miracle made sheets are luxuriously comfortable without the high price tag of other luxury brands and feel as nice, if not nicer than bed sheets used by some five star hotels. People, stop sleeping on bacteria. Bacteria can clog your pores, causing breakouts and acne. Sleep clean with Miracle. Now, just go to trymiracle.com slash the cast to try Miracle Made Sheets today. And whether you're buying them for yourself or as a gift for a loved one, if you order today, you save 40% off. And if you use our promo code, the cast at checkout, you'll get three free towels and save an extra 20%. Miracle is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so if you're not 100% satisfied, you'll get a full refund. Upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash thecast and use the code thecast to claim your free three-piece towel set and save over 40% off. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash thecast to treat yourself. Thank you, Miracle Made, for sponsoring this episode. Now, coming from stand-up, live audience, SNL, live audience, and then you go to movies, did you have a trouble adjusting to whether or not this stuff was funny because you're not really hearing any laughter? I know I've dealt with that, like, oh, 
the validation uh, is the laughter from yeah. the stand-up. Now you're doing the movie, and you don't get that. Is it? Is that all in your head, or are you just, oh, no, we're having, that it's was... It's tougher because that's why you're doing so many takes. You're like, I, you think it's good, you know? You do it, and you go, I like that one, and uh, but it's pure gut instinct because the crew is not allowed to laugh. No one's allowed to laugh. Sometimes when they say cut, people laugh. You've been in that situation, and you feel like that's a good one. Now you don't even know if that's the one they're going to use. Now it goes over an editor. There's so many ways to fuck up a movie. It's mm. It can be funny when you read it. Like I've done ones that don't work, and they're like, why'd you do that? I go, well, it's not starting shitty. I mean, it, it's usually starting somewhere in the vicinity. It, I'm not getting the best scripts, let's be honest. So especially back then, it's Will Smith, it's you know Vince Vaughn, or whoever's the biggest star is getting them, Sandler. By the time I get them, they're so mangled. Like ev people have said no, but you can either write one so we write Joe Dirt or Dickie Roberts, or you take one that's been passed around. It just had some stink on it. Like someone turned it down and then it just sat on a shelf. So you go, this is still good. We can revive it and just you rely on making it funnier and being out there and making it funnier. And then you hope it's good. But I'm not given like a perfect script going, this is great. Just say it and it's a hit. That's not really my whole career, you know, yeah. unfortunately. Well, but one of the best sitcoms, man. You were on Just Shoot Me, and oh, every yeah. line, boom, boom, boom. And and that's a place, as I said, right now on a sitcom where you do still get that big laugh uh, in the moment. And yeah. did you enjoy, I th it seemed to me when I used to watch it through his years, because as I said, I was a bit of a fan of you, that you you seemed to be enjoying that part of your life when you were making that I show. I did like it. I was lucky because I, I left SNL and I didn't, you know, you don't know what to do and everyone just walks off a fucking cliff. And disappears it's very hard to keep the balls in the air and uh, it's crazy though how you guys do that show and and you walk away like that's only that's like just the starter it's what you do after the show you judge yourselves by which is crazy that show is the accomplishment for some yeah, i mean that's just that's incredible in of itself is to go you can't help it right and people don't even know i was on that show you know when i see people today or they come to my stand up they don't know you know some of them just one person said i go all the way back to grown-ups one i'm like oh was that eight years like jesus christ yeah. i did some shit before that but i'm like oh you still like me and that's all i did is fucking that's like someone going up to tom cruise going i loved your new movie with yeah. maverick will you fly that's why i was introduced <laughs> to you <laughs> that's it but that's how it is and uh, i i don't know if i answered that sebastian about like it is hard on a movie when you don't get the laughs i mean i can tell when farley's being funny i think i go fuck that one's gonna be great like i know in my head he's getting laughs or things it's just very hard when it's dry jokes or shit and you go i just don't know and then you go they go moving on you're like okay that's it forever <laughs> like it's good or bad and then when you see a rough cut and you're like you're joking like or you see the ones they didn't use and you're like wait what about that and you can't even keep track because it's moving so fast you just hope they don't circle the last one and the editor gets lazy and goes just put that whole take in because in your head you're wow. like the first take the ending was good for me the second one the middle and then i kind of wow. nailed it the fourth one and you hope someone's picking through and sometimes they do but if they don't and they just go that take they like that take, and then you rarely have a chance to see it and go back and change and you might have that editing approval uh, and adam would let us come in and on the joe dirts and those he would just say that's yours just go do it and so that's that was fun you get to pick stuff and you live or die with it but when it's out of your hands and you take the blame, that's tough too. Mm -hmm. You've reached a point in your career though, where you, you don't even explain it anymore to people. Well, like, like you used to say, "That's not the take I was going <laughs> <love> with." <that." laughs> yeah. Just, ah, well, it. at this point, people <laughs> like me or don't. I mean, it's really hard. To, they've made up their mind. So, it, you know, um, and I appreciate you saying stuff about just shoot me because that was one of my favorite things to do. A guy went on it late. It was already shot. They added me. They tweaked a little bit. But like you know, if you work on a sitcom, if you get some jokes. Like I added a few jokes at the beginning and then I didn't need to. They would just, the writers sort of gravitate and go, oh, oh yeah. if you can do jokes, shove him some jokes. Yeah, Everyone was good on the show. They gave me extra jokes sometimes and then sometimes they would just say, and then at the end, Finch does something. Yeah. And then I go, what's that? And they go, just whatever you want. Just get some laughs. laughs. Just yeah. So then it's up to you to go, oh, and that's kind of fun. You get to try like three things and then they go, all right, we got one. And then that show was a f super fun run. You were always funny on that show. You were Appreciate expected it. to be too. After a while, it's like yeah. we knew, like Norm on Cheers when we were coming to you. Yeah, yeah. It was be funny. That so, was, the, was a lot a of gift. Pressure. Yeah, because yeah. you know when I'm at SNL and you know this, like to have someone write for you is such a gift. At SNL, they don't. 
I mean, that, that's not their fault. That's just the way that is. So you're a comedian and you're a writer, go. No one talks to you. You just go, what do I do? Here's a legal pad. No computers. Like, I just write a sketch. Like, yep. Yeah, I don't even know what the, what the fuck. I go, I write the title like in cursive. And they're like, do whatever you want. And then they're like, if yours gets on, mine doesn't. That's kind of how it is. So everyone's trying to be nice and helpful. But there's also an underlying competition, obviously. So I'm trying to get help. But Jim Downey's busy and he'll help when he can, but he's got a million things to do. Lauren isn't really putting on his knee. I'd love to go around and say it's a toxic environment today. It's like, no shit. Like, what job <laughs> did I have where any boss was, you know, yeah. burping you? Hey, are you okay today? Are you <laughs> feeling it? <laughs> and they walk by and go, go fuck yourself. I hope you die and quit. And, and they don't care. No one cares. No, Not like Lauren's no. a bad guy. That's every job in my life. Yeah. You too, I'm sure. Of course. And today people are like, I'm quitting my job. You don't know how toxic. When I hear toxic, I go, shut the fuck. <laughs> like, what do you mean? I was a busboy. You think they were carrying me around singing for He's a Jolly Good Fellow? They're like, hey, you fucking asshole. Get out there. Yeah. And I'm like, toxic, toxic. I'd like to go back and <laughs> right. No shit. That's, it's toxic, so you aspire to get yeah. the fuck out of there. That's called, yeah. Yeah. My dad was toxic. Everyone, like, no one. It, it it does feel like you can't baby everyone all the time, and then you do feel like, oh, I got to do better or whatever, but I'm not going to work. That's why you hate work. You go, go there and you go, and you tell your friends, isn't the boss a dick? That's just your common denominator that you get to say. And But SNL was tough, and everyone's just doing their thing, and I'm trying to write sketches. I don't know how to do it. My first sketch was probably 18 pages. And then I get to read through, everyone's like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, oh, now everyone comes out of the woodwork. Well, where were you? Uh, I don't know. And they're like, you don't? Uh, I'm like, I know. I'm like, please leave. I'm like, no. <laughs> you got me for four weeks. <laughs> like, they don't even get long line. contracts. It's like four weeks so they can cut bait. And like, how, how, like, was it? We talking two weeks prior to that? You're playing a comedy club? Like, yeah, exactly. I'm not even a headliner. Right? I'm a fucking middle. <laughs> yeah. So I'm out there middling my ass off, but I was sort of cocky because I'm like, I'm a good middle. <laughs> then I headline the first time they put the checks down. Everyone stops in my act. I'm like, what's going on? They go, checks go down about 30 minutes in and then. Literally, no one listens to your act for five minutes. Right. I'm like, oh, let me go back to being a middle. That was <laughs> right? that's the fucking spot. It really is. I used to, when I would first middle in like Caroline's in New York City. I would joke on a Saturday night well, yeah. to the other comics. I have the best spot in the entire country oh, tonight. God damn. Middling at Caroline, like no pressure, no Hell. nothing. Yeah. yeah, twenty minutes. Ooh, easy uh, the, the, the opener comes on for the people at home. Yeah, and the <laughs> opener comes on, warms them up. Now they got a little few knocks, a little right. boozy Susie in the front row, and then. They're ready to laugh. You, you kill all the premises. <laughs> <laughs> any, any current events? Yeah, and then and then the headline gets on, and there is something when the checks go down. There's a dip, and it just doing that extra fifteen or twenty or twenty five is just rough. Like, <laughs> I thought my act was tight. I do twenty five. Even if I'm middle, they do thirty. I go, what the fuck? <laughs> what is this toxic bullshit? <laughs> I don't do 30, guy. I'm a middle. You're not paying me. But I made a thousand a middle. Me and Schneider did at the improvs. <laughs> Wow. I thought it was King Cobb. That's a lot, man. I'm like, I'm raking in a K. <laughs> and then uh, got hired and didn't do much stand-up. Uh, wasn't a New York guy. Didn't know the clubs. You're there till 1 a.m. I'm not doing a set after one. I don't even know where to go. So once in a blue moon, I go down with Dana or Dennis and follow them. Killing. They'd say, I'll, can he go on? they go, if you go on. So then Dennis would go on and I'd go on after him. So it was like a package deal, you know. We'll put this uh -huh. dog shit on if you go on. So <laughs> I would go on and go, yeah, da, 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 da. Michael J. Fox, hey, Sarge. And then uh, <laughs> get one laugh. But I, you know, I didn't work on my act, which is very terrifying to not work on your act. And then the summer is like, I'd get a college or something. And they go, yeah, do 45. I'm like, 45 minutes? Which is actually gracious for a headliner. Like, that's the bare uh, men. Uh, and I, and I'm like, Who's got 45? Huh. And, and I don't even do it anymore. So I'm bringing notes up and everyone's like, so, but you got more money. You know, you started to get recognized and going, we'll give you three grand for a night. I'm like, for one night? A thousand bucker middle? <clears throat> this, that, but that was the peak of my even fame of like, this is farther than I've ever even dreamed of God. Mm -hmm. I never thought I'll be on SNL one eight. Never in a million years. I wasn't even like a character guy. I'm just like, please, God, Lord, if I can do this, my crummy stand-up act and just not borrow money from people, just pay the bills. I was, my nut when I moved out here was probably 20, eh, 1500 or something, 2,500 a month. No, it was probably 1500 a month. And uh, I go, if I can just pay that with absolutely no problems, you fucking can't get a flat tire. You can't get a ticket. You get, 
the shit that happens when you move to LA. So I had to borrow money from a uh, Bobcat, this comedian who's a great yeah. guy. He helped me out with six grand. I'm going to pay him back when I get like a little bit in the bank right now. But <laughs> I'm going to wait till the strike's over. I'm going to wait till all this shit's out of the way oh. when I get a cushion. But then Steve Oden, Odekirk, this other comic, I couldn't pay Bob X. I borrowed from him, paid him back. And now I owed him and then eventually got that back. But oh. very cool. Six grand is a lot of money to give someone. And I never wanted to owe you had a little Ponzi so scheme going to survive. When you <laughs> I had a little comedy there. fucking <laughs> shell game. And then I get, you know, you finally make a couple beans in your jeans and you, and I'm always scared. So I pay it for a car. If I get a house, I try to pay it off. I don't want any of that fear that was instilled, you know. At certain points, it's hard to pay shit off. But I try to live at the means where you're in a business that no one actually gives a fat fuck about. So... If there was no more me, me doing stand, it, the world would keep going. So if something happens and there's no, you know, like COVID happens, right. something happens you don't know about. I don't want to suddenly go, oh my God, I owe this and I owe that, you know, freak out. Yeah. It's usually it's kind of a push at that point. But I don't have a ton socked away either. But, you know, at least I don't owe the world, you know, yeah. I try not to. So I want to rewind a little bit. The mm -hmm. SNL audition, you say you're not a character guy. When you go in there and audition, are you auditioning with stand-up material? I, I don't necessarily know the process. I mean, I, I know people come in there with characters, but yeah. if you don't have any, do you just... You know, just... I didn't know this either, and uh, it's not even a dumb question because I didn't know. All I knew is from my experience. You know, Dana Carvey auditioned at Igby's, that old comedy club. I don't know if you remember that. That was an old one before you probably got out here, but it was just a little dumpy club that's now Plan B, a <laughs> strip club by... Um, it's a Paul Bernard one. Oh. Pico, where is it? Pico? Oh. Yeah, it was Flan. It was uh, Igby's. And uh, he went there and he said when he went into audition, Lauren came and he came in with Cher, of all people. <laughs> and he had to follow Rosie O'Donnell, but he said, can I go before you or something, some bullshit. And he did church light. He did all these things. Now he's a thousand percent what us now wants. Uh, and then Mike wrote him and Wayne's role, he does that. But he can grab a character, add some moves to it, you know, get some hooks, get some laughs, funny outfit, whatever. Uh, I was straight stand-up, so they got me. Uh, they just heard about me from that young comedian special that I talked to long about earlier. Yeah. And um, and then Schneider, he was on that with me. They, so they brought us in. They brought Tom Kenny, San Fran comic who's great, and uh, shit, maybe Dana Gould or something. Anyway, they just brought us to New York. They looked at tapes. You get in their vicinity, you know, you get in their world. And they go, okay, we've heard about this guy, we've heard about this guy. Bring him in. They went to Second City, saw some people. I go to Catch Rising Star in New York. Again, not never played New York. Uh, we go on, we're supposed to do, I think, 15 each. I think I did eight, I got off. I was, I was bombing so bad. Oh, shit. I cut the losses. Actually, right when I went on. So you're about to go on, then here comes all the writers, all these SNL people, Dennis Miller. I go, you're fucking kidding me. They're all, and the crowd is only, 15 people anyway. So most of it's SNL. I don't know who's who, producers and shit. So they sit down and they go, all right, we got to start putting you guys up. Spade, go. And Dennis Miller's back there and he goes, Spudley. <laughs> he goes, uh, by the way, don't kill too hard. It's a fucking red flag. I go, what? <laughs> <laughs> right before I walk up, what? What do you mean? He goes, yeah, you know, some polished road hack, some fucking garbage that always kills everywhere. I go, so what am I doing? And they're like, three, two. Go, Dennis. So I go out there and I'm like, don't do good. What am I doing? But what he meant was like, just they're just going to look at your writing. So I'm doing stuff. They're kind of laughing, but it's not by no means killing. I get out early because I'm even in my head, I'm like, that's not going to work. So I just do a couple things. Michael J. Fox, you know, that's an impression. I think I did maybe Tom Petty at the end, but you know, whatever. I'm not really a good impression. So I just did that. And then Schneider and then Tom Kenny. Tom Kenny kills. And the Dennis Miller fucking prediction came true. It didn't take him. They go, uh, you guys write good. Why don't you guys come write for us? And uh, and you could be feature players or whatever, but we like your writing. And I'm like, and Rob was so excited and I was not. <clears throat> I'm like, what do I do? Write for these fucking idiots? I don't want to write. I don't know how to write. I barely write for myself. And then you get there and they're like, write Mike Meyer or something this week. I go, which one's Mike Myers? <laughs> <laughs> and, I'm like, and, and 
<laughs> no, he's good. He can write it. I got to write for him. Uh, it's such a weird feeling. And it just really challenged you to be good because it took me six months to figure out how to write a sketch, you know, to not look bad at read through. Yeah. Where they don't go. And then I'm over there, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Cut. <laughs> like, they don't even, like, you go on the board after, so you do read through. This isn't what you asked, but you do read through. 44 sketches, sweaty, gross room. One w window behind Lauren, and sometimes he gets up, mm, cracks it. It's like, <laughs> it's 20 degrees. <laughs> and there's Alec Baldwin huddled up. There's him and the host, and then all of us around the table, and then all hair, makeup, set design. Everyone's behind them, so it's just jam-packed. The stressiest, sickeningest room. And then, uh, damn. And then, and then he's like, mm, gap girls. You know, when it comes to you're like, mm. because you're like, and then everyone looks up because they're so tired. It's three hours. Yeah. And then you're like, hey, I'm a gap girl. And they're like, what the fuck is this dog shit? <laughs> oh. But you're doing it. <laughs> but you walk around, you go, Farley, you're a girl in this. And you know, I tell them during the week, I'm writing this stupid thing. Stupid blah, blah. I mostly wrote so we could all hang out at, rehearsal together because you have to rehearse all week so yeah. put farley adam in it put everyone just so it's fun schneider and then we'd have the guest star you put the guest star in the host that's a good trick to get your sketch on they have to be in there and they have to get laughs and if if it's a tie give them your jokes because when they they leave read through they go in a room and they put them all on five by seven cards and it says cold open commercial one monologue blah sketch get sketch and then commercial commercial update and they put update bits they read and they pin them right next to update going, we like these two. And then we like these sketches and they get moved all around and they're in perfect order and they're like this. And then you wait for three hours outside that door. And then they just open the door and Lauren leaves and everyone, and the host leaves and then you, and you, and you, everyone gets to walk in there one at a time. You look at it and you go, you look at the show and you don't see it. And then you go, <laughs> <laughs> the worst is it's sickeningly perfect because they didn't touch it. You want them to struggle and go, mm, gap girls are sweet. Mm. And then they go, I don't know. And they go, mm, put it back, put that there. But it. it's not even in the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> now gap girls did get on. I got on every time, but but there's yeah. ones I wrote, I wrote Weekend Update and uh, sometimes Frank and would kill it. <laughs> and I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> oh man. Because it's just so tough to get anyone on your side. And if you got one naysayer in there, Lorna go, mm. Spade up there is pretty funny, and Downey's like, uh, yeah, I like it. Smigel's like, yeah, no. I'm like, Frank, can you fucking buzz kill? So I don't even know that till two years later. Yeah, like, oh yeah, he killed it. I go, he just, you know, didn't think I was that funny, I guess. But and that's okay. But god damn, does that cripple you? Is it, is it fun? I'm sorry. Is it fun? I, it's I'm I'm trying to put myself. Where the fun is? Yeah, like is it is it? It sounds like. Everything is like, oh, here's a sketch pad, and then you're like, okay, and then yeah. here's the bit, and no, yeah. everybody's sweating, and, and no one in the room, and it, it yeah. sounds, it doesn't right. sound. It's tough. It's very tense, and there's moments when you de-stress, when you go, let's go eat, and we all walk down, and then Farley climbs in a cab with someone and goes, hey, going my way, and then we all laugh because they kick him out and right. scream because he's a huge, fat person climbing in their cab, but- and they don't know he's famous. He's not famous yet. Yeah. And then we yeah. go to dinner and we laugh and we get drunk because we're so fucking stressed. And uh, I think I, I, I was more stressed than most because it took longer. Adam came on after me a couple months. Uh, Farley and Rock were about the same time. And um, Schneider got copy machine on and, that, and we weren't supposed to write for ourselves. And he got that and I was jealous. Yeah. He was uh, a little stingmeister. And I was like, wait, he gets to write his own. It was just so ballsy. He put it right in the read through. And I'm like, Rob, you can't do that. <laughs> All we thought every day was, we're going to get fired. If you do that, you get fired. You have to be at the you get fired. And uh, no one was like patting on the back going, you're doing great. They were just like doing their shit. But we had great right. The, the thing was, I've said it's so hard is, it's like saying, Sebastian, okay, you like to do stand-up. You're, and you're an open mic and they go, you're a headliner now. You're on the show as a headliner. So every day you're cramming going, how do I be a headliner? And it takes so long because writing a sketch is a different muscle. I'm trying to put, you know, something for Dana, something for this. And they go, there's too many sets. Okay, so I need just one or two. Yeah, that would be better. Okay, and then the next week goes by, your sketch bombed. Why? It was too wordy at the top. Okay, oh, it didn't have the host in it. So you start learning, you start streamlining, and then shit starts to sink. And then it, then it's fun because you go, I, I'm kind of getting there. 
um, and not getting fired, you're in a race. Because every year they'd go, what about Spade? And he goes, mm, I don't know, you know, we'll see. So I would move out of my little apartment and go back to LA and just stare at a wall. And then around August, all right, we'll bring him back. But you're never like, I'm killing it. That's why it's all humbling because it never, they never picked me up again. They just waited and I'd move out and then drag a mat. There's no fucking Uber Eats. I'm dragging mattresses upstairs. I'm getting food. I got a new table. My room is just literally a table, a phone. I'm like, and then just write, 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 freak out. And then uh, until my last year there was Lauren was like, mm, you're pretty funny. So he let me stay an extra year. Adam and Farley left. And it was a very weird year because that was sort of my teammates and um, Rock had gone. Schneider left and I was uh, I was there when Will Farrell started and uh I do remember seeing him that first week going, God, this guy's fucking funny. God, you can just tell. Yeah. I'm like, you don't need to know much. I saw one sketch, I go, Oof, this guy's good. And he, yeah, that your last year was the you had your own segment. Yeah. And it seemed like it was probably a lot stress free, right? No. It was a little easier, yeah. It was, yeah. it was actually harder to come up with ideas than I thought, but uh it wasn't sketches, just Lauren just goes, why don't you stay and I'll give you five minutes a week to do whatever you want. And I was like, oh my God, are Jesus. you kidding me? What a gift. I know. I mean, maybe he took every year to decide to bring you back, but I mean, who gets that no, kind that of final year? That was great. And, and they we all got to do a lot of fun bits and everyone there that was still there was cool to me. Uh, but I didn't really do the sketches. So I wasn't there all the time in the chaos of it all. Yeah. I would do like a field piece. I went to a baseball stadium or I went to get a tattoo or something. And that was fun. I, and they let mm -hmm. me have one writer and we wrote and... Uh, and it was kind of a fun year. Yeah, it was and hard that, that was the lovely Eddie Murphy year, right? With the falling star. Oh, it was probably right around that, yeah. <laughs> that was, I don't know if that was a mistake, but oh. <laughs> in hindsight. <laughs> uh, but you know, you're just trying to get um, attention. You know? And laughs, right? Yeah, just trying to get laughs. laughs. Exactly. And that Eddie Murphy one, I remember, because I thought, you know, the, the idea was he makes fun of everybody, but I, it's definitely not a two-way street. And it isn't for me. <laughs> I, I think I left. They made fun of me about two weeks later. Someone played me. Ah, I'm there with Sprint. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Let me get out of the building. Let, me, let the body get cold. <laughs> like, I'm the biggest idiot in the world. I go, I'm the part. <laughs> I think I still have an office there. Oh, yeah. I gave that kid advice in the yeah. hallway last year. And he waits for me to fucking eat. They're young. This guy came after me. And so... <sighs> whatever it was but uh you know and then a sitcom and then it, it the hard thing with people that are newer in it that do well you see them skyrocket uh that you think you gotta it is hard to keep it going and that's the harder part you know um and almost the bigger you get like when jim carrey came out and blew through the roof where i was the hugest fan still am and when ace ventura into the mask into like whatever the fuck another one was i i was just going Oh, Dumb and Dumber. And I'm like, you cannot get bigger, funnier. It made me laugh so hard. And then I thought, how does he keep it up? You know, and I don't really think that. I just thought, I'm sure in his head, uh -huh. there's that curse of like, it's like going too well. And everyone just turns over here and does this. And like right now, you know, one day you won't love Taylor Swift and it'll happen. Um, <laughs> not right now, yeah. maybe down the line. Yeah. You won't go to concerts anymore. You won't put her stuff. Uh, and all your merch will be piled up in a corner and you'll be like, I don't even wear it barely ever. <laughs> uh, but that's hard. So I think Shandling told me, uh, he said, you know, Seinfeld, he said, I like that career. He just, I remember he was making a million a year doing stand up. Someone told me. And after I smashed my apartment up, I was like, that's great, you know, because he just quietly did that every year. And he wasn't like a huge star, you know. He was just a great stand-up that was just like, they're like, oh, they're adding another show for him at clubs, you know. I did San Diego Improv with him and they're like, we're going to add another one. They sold out all week. I'm like, this guy sold out. And I watched him and he was rotating material. I was like, back then, comics did like 45, 45, 45. I'd, I'd work with them six years later. Same thing, same thing. Because it's not anywhere. Yeah. Same. And now the pressure rotated. Anyway, so Shanling was like, I was always like that, just slowly getting, you know, bigger and you could handle it in your brain. I never got that famous that fast where it's hard to handle anyway. Just people knowing you and this and that or money or everything about it is weird. But it was always sort of slowly. So it was easier on me, you know, I think. And I don't, everyone has a different way it happens. But just to hang around is still tough. So do you ever, do you live in fear that the next job might not come? That you go and do stand up, they might not 
come out. I, I deal with this, and I ask a lot of successful people who are in the entertainment business. Is there just a confidence with you to go, yeah, I'm going to go do stand-up, and people are going to pay and see me, and I'm going to have this amount of money? Or do you go, holy shit, there better be something around the corner? Uh, or, you know, do you ever fear that it's not going to be as good as it is? Yeah. I mean, also, you start spending more, and you don't even really notice it. You're not just getting up in the morning i'm spending so much and i if i don't even do anything it's like there's so much going out to so many different things that i don't physically see or know it's just this has to go here this gets paid and, and so you start going and i don't live horribly you know i spend money and i say okay if i want to do that i got to go make it i don't really mind working i feel better if i do stuff uh stand up i guess is something we can all do you know uh but i've never done a tour and i've never done theaters I was always just, it, it it had come up in the last like five, 10 years because no one I knew did that. And maybe Leno or Seinfeld or something. I never heard of that Carnegie Hall or that shit. Dice, you know, back in the day. But uh, in my own world, it was like, I got to do a TV show and then we're going to movie in the summer. It was never, I had a time to book a tour or even think about it. So I go, ooh, can I do the San Diego Improv this week? I want to go work on stuff. Oh, can I go to San Jose? That's a big room. Dallas and you know wherever so I wouldn't make a ton but I also wasn't building like a big stand-up audience yeah and there's comics that I didn't know in the last couple of years that are killing it and I said well maybe I should try to go out because if I don't have a tv show right now let me just see what that's like and it is different it's different to go out there people don't know me as a stand-up and they know me as a what from whatever they know me usually but that's not the number one thing and so I have to sort of win them over and go to their town then you go then you do a special. Then you talk about your podcast. Then you go back on the road. Then you do another one. Then you know I'm like, fucking shit. You've done a lot of specials. It's hard. It's and uh, he's a guy that I was on the back of the comedy store. And you know you don't watch everyone. You kind of go in and out. Everyone does. And I'd sit in the back where I was with someone, and, and just because whoever goes on, you kind of want to just out of curiosity. And he's the one that made me laugh so hard. I was like, holy shit. Who? I, why do I not know this? This is where I was like, what am I doing? This guy's the first guy sees better than me. I go, what the fuck? I gotta get my shit together, you know? And then I go in the other room and someone's gray and there's Theo killing. I'm like, hey, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. So you sort of take your eye off the ball and uh not that I'm not I think I'm pretty good, but like someone like him, it's, it's rare, you know. See someone that just kills it and uh, it just an interesting style and interesting performance. Uh so that's fun. I like seeing Theo. There's there's some guys there I I, I sort of got turned on to and it was fun to meet them or, or watch and then it gets you off your ass again it's like sitting at that read-through table and jack handy writes a brilliant script and you're like you start to figure out oh that's great but you know conan's writing one and bob odenkirk and greg daniels from uh <clears throat> King, you know the office yeah. it, it's they're too good it, it's not fair so i don't know yeah. that at the time ah, it's a handful of idiots they're all right and then later it's just too many and then Mike Myers will write his own, and then Dennis will write something, and then Kevin Nealon's a genius, you know, genius stand-up, and and Dana, I can't even think of everybody. I don't know, man. I think you're smarter, than, you're funnier than you think you are with the stand-up, and I think if you like really started like going, going yeah. for it, you'd put up something good. I do like it, and I'm doing theaters now, and then they're not the biggest, but it, it is fun. And when they come and I do a good job, I really like it. It's it's such a fucking beating. God, I just did. Niagara Falls and just coming back was 13 and a half hours door to door you know because uh -huh. that was the last one you come back and I'm like oh there's a connection I even mean, look I go I try not to do connections you might have all this stuff uh -huh. but you try to make it as easy as possible because yeah, it's already yeah. Yeah. getting your ass kicked and then uh -huh. everyone on the plane is watching just making notes of how weird you are on the plane <laughs> like I'm sitting behind David Spade he's fucking turned around his chair yeah. <laughs> you know everything is yeah. like looked at and you just feel like a weirdo and when you're on the road, you know, everyone comes up. We and we ate before the show and um we just did uh New York two nights and then we went up to what's that place called? Wilkesbury. Yeah, Wilkesbury. Oh, yeah. You know. take a covered wagon, you go to Wilkesbury and um <laughs> it's, but we stopped at a casino that was where a restaurant was picked. So I stopped by on the way and I go in and maybe every person in the restaurant came to get a picture during dinner, sit at my table with me. No one gives a fat fuck. Oh, man. Hey man, is it cool as they're sitting down? Don't be a fucking weirdo. All right, hey man. All right. Hey, this way, you, you can get one. They okay it. 
No, no, it's fine. He's fine. No. Yeah. And how do I do it? How does my phone work? Oh, oh, it's... You ever have them look at it afterwards like as if it's not good? You're yeah. going to come back for another one? No, they go, no, 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 no. Another one. Yeah. I go, I don't give a shit what you or I look like. And then, of course, they pick the more. I look like the worst. I go, hit me with some fucking filters, dude. Help me out. Help out the cow, man. Speaking of uh, restaurants and going up to people. This is early on when I first had moved out here. I saw you. I was with my mom and my sister, right? New to Hollywood. You walked in. To... <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I have these on? This is uh, at the cheese Cheesecake oh. Factory at the Grove, right? And this Check is when I... This this is when I'm like I'm in Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking about my mom. Four stars. The, David Spade's here. We're the right. You know, like we felt you like we picked it. the right restaurant. You're in it. Oh. You're in it man. He's getting <laughs> potato skins too. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I think I saw you once, and I think I brought Chris over to say hi to you. Is that true? Chris Rock, were you at Catch? Mm. Were you with your wife at Catch. God, no. Catch a Rising Star in New York? No, at uh, Catch the Restaurant. Oh, Catch. Yeah, Catch. I think, catch. <laughs> I, think uh, I think that happened, but yes, I did. didn't know you well, and uh, you, uh, you, you are sort of quiet when you go to the comedy store, admittedly, right? Yeah, I'm quiet. So um, I don't know the vibe, but I'm, you know, everyone kind of goes in there, do your biz, who's up next, who do I introduce, what, what are their right. credits, you know? Everyone's, everyone's pretty um, polite about that stuff. We know all the job you got to do, and then, uh, and then I think you uh, either text me or, or said DM me something nice about one of the movies. It was very nice. Yeah, and I said okay. Well, we're okay because I don't know. Yeah. Sometimes do you know this? Sometimes you don't know where you stand with them. Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> so, I I plow right through that, but no, no, you're talking about it. because it is like it's um you know those kind of people that think about everything they say before they say yeah. it. And I'm the opposite. I'm like halfway through saying it, going hope this plays itself. Yeah, out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I kind of. Do, speaking of that, do you do you have a problem with the environment that we're living in today? Talking about what you can and cannot say. Do do you have any editing at all, sure. or do do you just? Because uh, I say something like that, and then I call later and say, take it out. <laughs> <laughs> but don't you think... <laughs> That's so fucking funny. <laughs> but it is hard because you uh, the way you talk growing up, and you, you just have to just keep sort of tweaking it. And we had a great run. And right. then it suddenly was like, oh, you can't say that. Now you can't say that. So, okay. But if there was something to be said for what is malicious and what's not, I guess it doesn't matter. It just all is offensive. So... Yeah. I can justify things in my head growing up saying, no, no, it's not, I'm not like a horrible person, but I guess that's what horrible people say. I don't know. No, I feel like there's an age thing. I literally feel like 47 and older, yeah. you're not responsible to learn any of the new shit. No. <laughs> you know? Just, just, just know we're going to be dead within 30 years and you can do all your new talk now, right? But like, we can't, you can't, I can't change now. I was using, I used the word Indian giver the other day. What am I supposed to say? So you know somebody who gives you something. I never I'm, even I'm, understood what that was until someone said you can get canceled for that. I go, what does it even mean? Like, uh, there's things where you say and you go, you didn't say. It. There's someone, a guy said something on TV and he got fired, and I go, why is that bad? And then they explain it to me, and I go, oh, shut up! Like, is that really? No one even connects that. But mm -hmm. I'll tell you after. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I yeah, yeah. But save I, us an edit. It's yeah, save <laughs> your fucking. <laughs> but yeah, it is hard because you. You want to be sort of uh, doing stuff that not everyone's doing, and you want to have your own personality. You want to say things that are actually funny and get laughs. And sometimes you got to break eggs like that uh, in some respects. And pe I did five minutes in my special about pedophiles, and I got some flack, but not that much. But I think I do it in the goofiest way where it's not that bad. You know, like, have you ever done corporates where they go, uh, I'm sure you do corporates, but mm. they go, listen, um, First of all, we were just talking about this the other day where you, you, you want to tell them less is more. You won't believe this. I think Seth Meyers said this the other day. Less is more. You, you want an hour because you're paying money. You really need about 30. I'm telling you, you're fucking, people are going to hate it and it's going to go too long and you're going to, I got my money to work out of this motherfucker. But you just want 40, I'll even do 45. Let's meet in the middle. And if you can get away with that, it's great because sometimes it works. Most of the time it doesn't, but most of the time they, they bear with you. Fine. We were hoping you're a surprise guest. And if you're not the one they think I was there and there was a rumor, it was Gwen Stefani <laughs> and no oh. doubt. And people are like, Gwen Stefani's here. I'm like, oh fuck, that's not tonight. <laughs> I was like, is she's here too? And, they're like, and then I get on the like, 
Oh, 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 is that in uh, lieu of me? Oh, it was me instead of? Because one night I did one, and it was Gwen Stefani one night, me one night, and Stevie Nicks one night. And I go, this is fucking great. You go out or, and journey the next night. And they were playing journey. They were like, this tomorrow night is journey. Don't forget. And then when I went on, I go, enough bullshit about journey. We're going to live for tonight, guys. I'm here tonight. Quit promoting tomorrow. They're stuck here. They're going. Why are the flyers? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. You point. know what I mean? Yeah. It's your own company. Just want to let it's you mandatory. know what you were this close to seeing yeah. instead, baby. Get through tonight <laughs> and tomorrow is <laughs> Oh, that's right. Oh, it's a four-day event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so they so say, here's a great, no pressure for you. Hey, if you don't like me, don't worry. Tomorrow, you're going to be singing. Yeah, don't you stop got, believing. I go, look at this motherfucker like this. You're not journey. <laughs> <laughs> so I, they say, can you keep it clean? You probably hear this. This is just the most common thing in corporate dates. And you go, literally, I will say fuck five times and no one even knows it because they had one guy there talking about eating pussy for a half hour. And that's what they mean. Just say that. You're not like filthy, like offensive, like everyone's running to HR. If you're just saying, and, I don't know, and you slip it in, just the tone is lighter. They don't get that either. They don't get that. That's not flipping people what? one employee <laughs> that offended me one employee cut right? that out yeah cut. <laughs> see what i'm saying right and you also bring up a good point in that and i forget you know because i do stand up but i'm not like i didn't do all these movies it's like an, you're kind of iconic so when you're done performing and you're on a plane i mean you 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 gotta itch your nose somebody saw that you know yeah. you you blow your nose you don't have a napkin oh my god spade <laughs> used his hand like they're watching you yeah. but yet you know, you don't have like goddamn Elon Musk money where you're not going to fly private. So instead, you're like just the hamster in the in the glass Well, cage when I right? do tours, I try not to fly private because it just eats up too much unless right. you're sponsored. But I do. I don't really mind all that stuff. Uh, I'm sort of used to being oogled and and people more like RoboCop, really analyzing eh, how tall is he? Oh, does he look like? He's a little beat up. Yeah, I was thinking just too. Everything about this motherfucker. Really good hair. What I thought. I the hair little, they combed for the last thing I just did. A little something in there would be nice touch, bro. <laughs> what do you want in there? <laughs> something you know, just to give it a little more. Like, is it too? Uh, looks well, too I, I, perfect. No, I could tell like a slick back look with something there would be great for hosting the show. Oh yeah, yeah. That's what it is. Snake oil. Uh, yeah. I think you're trying to cut me down. I can't get it though. But I'm <laughs> cut you down. <laughs> I don't get it. I'm taking it as a compliment. No, you have great hair. <laughs> okay, I swear yeah, to God, bro. Are you kidding me? Because well, he got never... a little something. I'm like, well, I don't what, what that part is. No, let me let me translate. Yeah, yeah. I use well, a hair wax. What what he like? Oh. What he would like for you to do? Yeah, okay. Given the hair that you have. Yeah. Is you put some product in? No, there no I'm saying I bet when you do, I would imagine. Oh, you now do it's when. It. <laughs> 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 no, I don't. I don't even have any. Dude, I barely I have, have hairspray. Um, I'm straight. Uh, oh, but anyway, Moroccan, tell me about, tell me about your oil. regime. Oh, Moroccan oil. I know what that is. That yeah. would but be. you have good hair. Yours isn't going anywhere. Dude. Yeah, but yours with a little Moroccan oil. No, your Kurt oh, Russell sorry. guy. Kurt Russell oh, hair. Well, Kurt Russell's the yeah. fucking king. See it again. You talk about Jim Carrey. And you've been around these all these talented people your whole career. Who is the funniest guy that you've ever been around? Like you're like this guy's like you said, Jim Carrey. But I'm talking about around, uh, around a table, dinner yeah. or whatnot. Is there a guy that you're like this guy? Every time I get together, you no. Know, I, I have to say, phone calls is Chris Rock. He, just on the phone when he yeah when he call he just calls out. He's the only one that calls from a block number, and I go, it's got to be him because, and I I gamble because if it's not, I'm fucked. You know. <laughs> But I just go, yo, and he goes, so I'm at dinner. He just goes right into <laughs> oh, whatever he's talking about. <laughs> yeah. And he just tells me the funniest stories that are uh, you can't tell. Always makes me laugh. Uh, I would probably go back to Farley. I hate to say it because it's too easy, but everyone agrees. Like, it's just, um, there's so many right now I hang out with, and I usually don't hang out with anyone that doesn't have some, even dating girls, they don't have to be like, Robin Williams, but if they sort of have a lightness and a fun thing to them, I like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or they laugh, or they there's sort of a charm. It doesn't. They don't have to be any young, you know, doing one liners. That's not really what I mean. But I like that feel with people, and they they're kind of uh, upbeat. And uh, he was really funny. Another weirdo. Farley was just funny and very likable, and always like a puppy trying to make you laugh, grabbing you, and and then wanting you to make fun of him, and then just doing bits, bits nonstop. And then uh, Norm is funny. Norm is a very weird, I feel say that, yeah. very weird humor that makes you infuriated uh, sometimes. Or when you watch him, 
Uh, he goes, I usually, sometimes uh, I spend the first 10 doing great and then an hour bombing. I go, I think it's the other way around. <laughs> I think you bomb until everyone gives up and then you start doing your act. I'm like, what are you doing? Because he almost oh. takes pride in eating it. <laughs> and he's like, sometimes I do it on purpose. I go, why? <laughs> do you know what our job is? Yeah. I go, I get it that you're like a crazy genius, but uh, the audience is paying like we're on that Sandler tour those tickets I don't know how much they are but everyone's doing great and, and then Schneider one time because Schneider and Norm used to argue all the time on uh, especially on the group chat and we're like uh Seattle we're in Seattle and uh Norm kills in Portland comes up in Seattle does not do well just because he's dragging he's telling like a Johnny went to school joke for 15 minutes we're on the side like this and we had to follow, you know, I'm like, I got to follow this one. So he gets off and then Schneider goes, all right, Norm McDonald, uh, you never know what Norm you're going to get. And tonight you got that one. <laughs> <laughs> and then on the group chat, he goes, hey, fuck you, Rob. <laughs> For that Seattle bullshit. And Rob immediately like, well, what are you doing? Like, doesn't back off at all. Come on, we got to follow that shit. <laughs> <laughs> hysterical so he he is funny um adam's always pretty upbeat in a good mood and uh and he likes joke he likes to call he likes to text funny shit uh so i like that under the the pressure he's under in his life of things he still tries to keep it loose because at a certain point it's just like a fucking huge machine man can i ask you this as, as we wind down here yeah i i, I always put the wind down because it uh, alleviates some of the pressure here to, and you go me. okay okay i go there might be a fucking end in sight <laughs> 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 i'm texting heather did you tell him about the hard <laughs> i have to be at jimmy john's in 12 minutes <laughs> check ways we, we just hired having guests on the show we've been doing this for 10 years no guests but we've decided really? Really? yeah okay. yeah we have guests come in now over the 10 years we've talked about many of people on the show but one person that keeps coming up is tom cruise mm. have you ever been around this man and if so is it if so walk me through it <laughs> <laughs> what's the experience H have you i have yeah it, and uh the experience is first of all i used to get jealous because one time sandler at dinner with tom cruise and jim carrey about 10 years ago and i was like god you motherfucker like what could be more fun like he's on some wow. secret chain where they talk I, Jim Carrey, oh, wow. I can get, I can talk to, uh, and he wound up being. We're more friends now than we were then. I just didn't never saw him, but I've always sort of thought he was really funny and just so interesting. Um, with and then the Truman Show and all that shit. So Tom Cruise, I have seen, and and, and it's true that he, you know, you make fun of him. There's a million jokes about him, but goddamn, when you're right with that guy, he's a movie star, and he shakes your hand, looks you right in the eye. Takes off his fucking Ray-Bans. I don't. And uh, <laughs> and just, you're the only guy in the room. He just talks you, you're so fucking funny, and but you did this and this. It's like he's been briefed on me. I just see him. <laughs> wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Where, where, where is this happening? I go, where's the earpiece? Um, <laughs> this guy? Which, <laughs> okay, okay, you know, anyway. <laughs> Has a hat on sometimes? So, oh, yeah, I and got then it. I saw one time when Grown Ups was going up against Night and Day. You know what that movie is? Oh, yeah. Tom Cruise, Cameron, Cameron Diaz. Diaz. Yeah, it was a good one. So they're like, Night and Day is coming up, and I love Cameron Diaz. And, and I go to So House, which I never go to, and I'm having, <laughs> and I'm having uh, dinner, and I'm with two people, and I have my back to this booth. I come back, and they go, can you fucking not be a total star fucker for a second? I go, tell me. And they go, no, no, because you're going to say something because you've had two drinks and there's no stopping you. And I go, I won't say one thing. And they go, Tom Cruise is sitting behind you. I go, they go, wait a second. I go, I'm going. And they go, think of a game plan, anything. I go, none, just like you, none. He had his motorcycle helmet on the chair and he's sitting. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, my God. <laughs> Fucking Cupid. Boing. Yeah. What uh, else would he have? What else would he have, oh, Spade? Yeah, he's a what a stud. And I go, hey man, uh, big night tomorrow because we were going up against uh, the movie. See, but that's you. That's legendary you, uh, like uh, the guy in the cafeteria, yeah, yelling I, at the bully. You know. I'm just trying to be because I I met him before and he was nice. And he goes, sit down. And then he goes, I don't know. I think you guys are gonna take this. I've been looking at stuff. 
I wasn't even saying it to say anything like it. Yeah, com- yeah. I was just trying to start talking to him. Super nice. Is there a, they're alone? He's there alone. What? <laughs> <laughs> I think he's waiting for someone. I'm like, you who, better who? be because there's no reason I'm leaving. So, <laughs> who makes Tom Cruise wait? I don't know. I go, who's, I want to meet that who's person. Who's this punk bitch? Yeah, I actually left on my own volition. Is that a word? Yeah. yeah. And I just said, like, I'll leave him alone. So I went back. Hey, it's so weird. You go like this. You go, okay. And I just turned to the other side of the booth. <clears throat> <laughs> he was on this side. So I just had to go. Weep. So I sit there and I go, oh, God, he's fucking cool. He's <laughs> but you know what I never do? Ask anybody for their number. <laughs> do you think this is weird? Asking a guy for their number. I don't like it. Well, how do you? I wouldn't ask Tom. There's no reason to. But I have people, so many people ask me for my number. It's so ballsy to me. They go, hey, man, I used to see you at this fucking club. And I'm in a restaurant. I'm like, oh, yeah, hey, man. Yeah, no, I used to go there all the time. You would go there. You had your buddy with the blonde hair. Yeah. Hey, you still have that old number? 310. Oh, oh. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what to do. I'm like a girl. I'm like, um. Oh. And then half the time I just give it to him because the first time I gave someone the wrong one, he goes, all right, where's your phone? It's not ringing. Go, oh, oh, what did I give you? Oh, every uh, number was wrong. Um, <laughs> it's almost impossible. I got none of the numbers right. And then, uh, and so I don't know what to do. I freeze. So I feel like that's a, yeah. and if I ask a girl, it's someone like Brad Pitt, right? I'm, well, that's starting too high. But even regular, just celebrity types, I would feel so weird. Hey, it's such yeah. a weird. Did you pull back because if Brad Pitt asked you for your number, you you would think in your head, well, that would actually be okay. Oh, I'd make out with him. <laughs> no, I'd be like, well, you know we're dating now. No, I, I've i seen Brad over the years, and he's always super cool. Another one like Tom Cruise, where superstar, couldn't be better looking, couldn't be fucking cooler, feel weird for his life, because you talk about the stairs, that guy gets. Just, he couldn't handle the planet being that good looking. Then you add in he's a millionaire. Add in he's a superstar. So... The fact that it's it, you, you, you figure out there's almost nowhere to go. He sort of slinks around motorcycle also, and he slinks around and does his life. But Seven Eleven, I mean, you don't even know me. What if you're Brad Pitt? Like the slowdown of like he can't even turn his head. Just you connect eyes with that guy, and everyone goes, "Wait, is that?" And so that's his whole life. So if you see him in a contained situation where everyone's being pretty cool, I think, uh, and he's the coolest guy in the world, and he and he talks and bullshits. Um, the Tom Cruise theory I have is he goes movie to movie because it's a fake world where he can live and everyone's normal around him. It's like he's at the Holy Grove, God. but everyone's not shitting their pants. So he walks on the movie set and everyone's like, hey, Tom, or they don't talk to him. Everyone just does their business like you're in a movie. Everyone's got their shit to do. Guys, <coughs> and he's just, and then everyone talks, he goes to his trailer and no one's weird to him. And the second you walk out, everyone's like, what the fuck, it's Tom Cruise. <laughs> and then I'll get a picture. I, 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 FaceTime, my friend. And so I think he likes me. He feels, he feels like a normal person. That's my stupid thing. Oh, wow, that may be right. Something to it. Yeah, maybe that's why he's always skydiving. The sky is the only place where nobody <laughs> tries to bother him. Shit. And then yeah, another guy drops down filming. Can you do a video, my friend? Oh, are we doing it? Yes. Listen. Yes. We know you're a busy guy. We're at the halfway yeah, mark. No, yeah. <laughs> no, no. no, no. We know you gotta go. <laughs> Heather, uh, we've got that thing. Uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna put my car in neutral and go <laughs> down the hill. We're literally at the top of LA oh, right God. here. All right, we're listen. We're gonna split this cast episode up to five segments. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, do we're, it. we're, yeah, we're it out. good for new, the New Year's. You know what? You know, before you do leave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I find something uh, I, that, that no one ever not. I've never seen it before, but you do it on a consistent basis. We communicate through Instagram, right? Yeah. You don't even you don't even write. This guy oh, I does, talk. he does voicemails. Like yeah. I get a voice message from him for like for a minute. Oh, and nice. and then my question to you is when you send a voicemail to me, hmm. it, are you thinking I'm gonna send one back? Is that <laughs> is that preferred? Oh, I just, or it, it I don't ever know what to little, do. I don't want it to sound flirty. I mean to, for to talk is weird. But I can't type that fast, and I have to go back and fix it. It's easy just to say something and move on with your life, yeah. or driving is safer. I don't need you to say it back. If you just answer, it's good. Okay. Uh, I, but, I, I, that's my wife. I go, I got a voicemail from David Spade. Now, What's the protocol? Yeah, do I? 
do I voice back or is it okay to type? She can do it for you if you want. <laughs> hey, Sebastian's <laughs> eating his noodles right now. <laughs> but he wanted you to know all systems go for the podcast. Uh, you know, that would be good. But I I, I voice text too, uh, which might be infuriating, but it's so much easier to get all the inflections right just because you're just talking. And when people text you, sometimes they don't get what Fair enough. We'll, we'll never know a voice text from you because after that, I'm not asking <laughs> for your number. I'm uh, too scared to now. <laughs> So that thank you for coming here. We do, really do appreciate it. And uh, we, can we get a photo with you? One hundred percent. And don't worry, we're gonna plug it. Snake oil. Where we'll, do we do it? Right yeah. like this. Yeah, right here. Yeah, right right oh, shit. All right, boys. One, two, three. We do it. Bam, bam, bam. And bam, then after bam. that, we do a thing where you get on the roof and clean the gutters. <laughs> <laughs>